This video is meant to give you a quick introduction on how to use Excel. So I'm starting here with a list of numbers that were generated in the lab today. These are the distances between adjacent dots for a tape that was dropped through a spark timer. And ultimately, we're going to use these to calculate the acceleration due to gravity. So the first thing I want to do is I want to label this column inf information. So I'm going to add, you go to insert and add a couple of rows here two rows, and I want to label this column as delta x. So on a Mac, if you use option J, you'll get a delta sign. So I'm going to put delta x, and then I want to say what my units were. So these are, this was in centimeters, and just put return, and now I've got that column labeled. Um, in the lab sheet, we were asked to find um, the, the average velocity in an interval. So what is that? That's V average. So I'm going to label this column V and then AV, but I'd like to have this as a subscript. So I'm going to go up to Format Cells and with the AV highlighted, I can just highlight subscript here, check that off and say OK. And there it shows up in there as VAV. And what are the units going to be here? Well, I'm going to divide the displacement in centimeters by a unit of time. So the units are going to be in centimeters per second. Of course, it's still putting those in as a subscript. You can see that here. So now I need to go back to format cells and uncheck subscript. So now that will show up as normal text. And there I have it, VAV in centimeters per second. OK, so how do we calculate the average velocity? Well, what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to take each of these distances and divide by the amount of time between two adjacent dots. And for each of the set, the pairs of dots, the amount of time is 1 over 60th, or 1 over 60 seconds, or 1 60th of a second. So what I can do is in this cell here, I can write down a formula. So I'm going to say that this cell is going to be equal to this value, 0 0.05, so I click on that cell and it, it writes down A3 for me, divided by the amount of time, 1 divided by 60. And then when I push return, it gives me the answer to that calculation. Now, I don't want to write down the same thing in the next cell. Instead, I want the computer to make that calculation for all of the cells in this column. So doing that turns out to be really easy. I highlight the cell that has the formula in it, click on the corner of the cell on that little tiny blue square there, drag it down, and Excel does that calculation for me for all of those values. The other thing that you were asked to find in the lab sheet was to find the change in average velocity between two adjacent points or something like that. So let me label that change in, I wonder if I can, let me try something here. Let me try copying this, put it in here. Yep, that worked. The only thing is this doesn't have a subscript, so I'm going to format cells again and put subscript. Okay, so now I have the change in average velocity. Now that will, I'll, that, those units will be centimeters per second as well. Let me show you why. If we want to find the change, we subtract the final from the initial. So what I, we're going to do is all the way down the line here, we're going to take one average velocity and subtract the one before. So if I go here, I can say equals, click that, and then subtract that one. So that's going to do, it's going to subtract this cell from this cell. And once again, I can take the corner of that box, click and hold, and drag it all the way down. Now just so that you can see how this is working, if we look at this cell here, you can actually click on this box and it'll show you what it's doing. It's subtracting 96 from 120, and so it's working just as we, we would hope. And when you subtract a value in centimeters from, per second from another value in centimeters per second, the units are still going to be centimeters per second. So the units on there look really good. All right, so one of the things you're asked to do in the lab is to make a graph. So that's what we're going to do next. And what I want to do is I want to, I want to graph average velocity versus time. 
And uh, so I need a column here that is a time column. So I'm going to go and I'm going to click on this cell and I'm going to insert a new column here. I'm going to give myself some space. And I'm just going to make a new column that I'll call dot number. So there was the first dot, the second dot, the third dot. And so there's one, two, three, like that. And Excel is very smart. If I highlight these three cells and click on the corner and drag down, it figures out what the pattern is. Obviously, you're adding one every time, and it will fill in that column for me. So what I, what I want to do is I want to graph this against this. So I'm, I highlighted this column. Now I'm pushing Command on my Mac and highlighting this column. And then I'm going to go up to Insert, and I'm going to insert a chart. When I do that, this new menu bar comes up. And the first thing I need to do is choose what kind of chart I want. And I would like a scatter chart. I don't want to connect any dots. I don't want a smooth line. I just want to, I just want a chart with a bunch of points on it. So I'm going to click that, and my new chart comes up. It's very nice. You can see that the data is basically linear, which is what we would expect. And I personally like to have my chart show up in a new tab down here. So I'm going to, let's see here, how do we do that? Control click, and I'm going to move the chart, and I'm just going to put it in a new sheet. Chart 1 is perfectly reasonable as a name. And now you can see it down here. So sheet one has my information. Chart one has the, the chart. Um, I'd like to have some labels on the X and Y axes, and I'd also like to have a title on my chart. So if you go to chart quick layouts, you can probably find something that will work, like this one. Look at this. I can highlight the chart title. What do I want to call this? How about velocity versus time? Oh, maybe it's average velocity. And on this axis, what do we have here? Uh, average velocity. Make sure that you add units. That's in centimeters per second. And I want to get rid of this up here. It's a little bit funny to have it be on its side. Ah, what did I just do? Let me bring that back. There we are. Average velocity in centimeters per second. And then down here we have time. And this is a funny thing. You can see that it goes from 0 to 25. Now you know the thing didn't take 25 seconds to fall. These numbers represent uh, the various intervals. And each of those had a length of 1 over 60 seconds. So the unit for this time is actually 1 divided by 60 seconds. That's kind of a weird unit, and it's going to result in a weird slope, and I'm going to let you figure out how to make sense of that. But in any event, that's what our units are for time. So you're supposed to find a line of best fit, or a regression line, or a trend line, and you can do that by highlighting the one of the data points, and then several of them will be highlighted. And then you can go back to chart and add a trend line. There it is. You can go to options, and which is here. There are several different things you can look at here. We definitely want a linear trend line. Under options, you want to display the equation on the chart. You can decide whether you care about the R squared value. That's kind of interesting. It tells you how close your data is to being linear. And the closer this value, this R squared value is to one, the better it is. So this is pretty, pretty nice linear data. I think I'll take that off for now. And then press OK. And now we have a graph that has axes labeled. It's got a title. It's got the equation for the trend line. And here you can see, oh, it looks like the slope of the graph, which is supposed to be acceleration, is 16. Are those units meters per second squared? The answer is no, they're not. This is 
this represents the rise over the run. And if you go back to the units here, centimeters per second and one over 60th of a second, you can see that those units are not in centimeters per second squared. So you have to figure out how to play around with this value for slope to get something that looks more like the acceleration due to gravity that you're used to, that is 9.8 meters per second squared, but we're certainly very close. All right, so let's go back to the sheet and make a couple uh, of extra adjustments here. When you're printing out this information, maybe to put in your report that you're going to give me, you might decide that you wanna make the formatting look a little bit nicer. One of the things I like to do is just center everything. You could put everything on the right or everything on the left, but it's nice to have some consistency. You might also want to make the um, labels for the columns bold, and you can just do that by pushing Command and then B. You can also make it happen up here. And you might like to set up these columns so that they have um, borders around them. So maybe you decide you want to do this. There might be an easier way to do this, but this is good enough. Maybe you also want to set apart these top, this top row. Anyway, you get the idea. If you have your, if you're, if you're producing a report in Word, then you can take this whole thing and push Control C and transfer that into a Word document. I'll show you that now. So I just highlighted it, push Control C. Let me open up a new Word document and I can put my chart or my, my uh, data right in there. So that's kind of a nice thing to be able to do as well. So I think that's it for now. If you have any additional questions, of course, you can always come and see me during conference period, but this at least gives you an idea of how to set up those equations to make your calculations easier and also how to create a chart with a trend line.